My intention with my makeup this morning was to go for a very subtle wing. They were a bit uneven, had to even them up, and that escalated. I'm now more wing than person, to be honest. So hello, greetings fellow humans, and welcome to another ill thought out project. I have been thinking recently about the importance of wearing the correct undergarments when creating a historical figure, and the bullet bra. You can buy bullet bras from modern retailers, but of course I decided to take the complicated route and I'm gonna make one. Partly because I think it'd be fun, and partly because I have quite a small rib cage and quite a large chest, so the cost that will be involved in me acquiring a bullet bra that actually correctly fits me will be astronomical and quite unfair. I've never made a bra before, I've never drafted a pattern for a bra before, but we're gonna give it a go. When I was looking through the interweb, the way that was repeatedly suggested of drafting a bra cup pattern was to take an existing bra that fits you, that you don't wear, and cut it up. Don't have one of those, so instead I did what every completely normal 28 year old does, and spent a wild Friday night making this cling film and packing tape replica of my right breast. Because what else do you do? Perfectly reasonable thing. I also labelled which side it was and which way up it goes, just in case I forgot. So basically I'm going to cut this into pieces to create my pattern pieces for my cup, and this is the fabric I'm going to be making it out of. Because, well, because well, I want to, really. Yeah because I wanna. So I started by drafting the pattern for the band of the bra using this handy flexible curve ruler to measure and trace out the shape I needed at the bottom of the cup. I used a French curve ruler and tracing the band of an existing bra I owned to roughly figure out the rest of it. I cut it out and tested the fit of that pattern piece against my body. I needed more space under the arm and less between the two straps at the back, so I made some adjustments and I gave it another go. Okay, I have successfully, I believe, drafted a bra band pattern. This is iteration 2.5. It's the second one I made with a few small adjustments. Took a bit more off the back, thinned out the place for the strap to attach, and I smoothed out the gentle curve that is along the bottom. It exists. It took a lot of brain to make this pattern, and I've run out. I'm gonna come back tomorrow to draft the cut pieces, and I think I'm gonna draft curved cut pieces and bullet bra cut pieces. If I'm gonna go to all the hassle of making myself a correctly fitting bra pattern, I feel like I should be able to make bras that I'll wear in a more day-to-day -day way. But that's a job for tomorrow because my brain is leaking out my ears and I need food and I'm tired, etc. So I shall see you on the morrow. Okay, we're back coffee's cold. And it is cup making time. We'll just go with that. It's cup making time. Fine. Fine, brain. Fine. For the cup pattern, I wanted to make a pattern of the existing shape first before I started messing around with making anything pointy. So I traced each piece onto my pattern paper, labelling them all carefully and putting arrows at the nipple point of each piece to try and avoid any confusion. I used masking tape to gently stick them all together, which was, I admit, a bit of a tricky business, so I could check that the cup shape was still correct. So, I took this and tested the fit off camera for obvious reasons, and have discovered a few things. I thought that the sides of the cup extended too far outwards when I test fitted the tape version on myself, and so I drew a couple of lines in so that I had a guide to work from if I wanted to alter those curves. Discovered the curves that I drew as the alterations are definitely the correct curve. Also, to turn a dimensional piece into a flat pattern you need to cut into them. You need to do things like this, where you basically create a dart, and then you can draft the pattern in such a way that you remove that dart. I did that on the two bottom pieces. I did not do that on the two top pieces. I tried to just squidge it and hope. The result is that the two bottom pieces of the cup are much better. So I'm gonna redraft the two top pieces. Very long way of saying that. Basically it was a relatively successful test fit, but there are some small changes that need to be made. So, it's pattern redrafting time, kids. That's what we're doing. So I pulled off all the masking tape, made adjustments to and then traced the pattern pieces that had pretty much worked, redrafted the ones that didn't, and tested them again, and it worked. I then traced them all again, 
but increased the pointiness of the nipple points, cleaned up all the lines, labeled each cut piece, and then it was time to do a mock-up. I know, right? Who even am I? I laid out and pinned all my pattern pieces, got distracted by the cat for quite a while. Ah, yes. What? That's the stuff. Ooh, more stroke. I appear to have been deceived. Am I outraged? And then cut all of the pieces out. Okay, so it is a later point in time. When did I stop? The day before yesterday? It is an amount of time later. And the pattern is, I think, finished. The pieces for the mock-up are cut out. The mock-up won't be entirely precise because it is a very different fabric from the fabric I'll be using as the shell of the bra. The fabric I'm using for the mock-up is a cotton jersey fabric and the plan is to use it as a lining for the bra. The fabric I'm going to be using for the shell of the bra is cotton and does have the tiniest amount of stretch but they're not really comparable. So this is more of a vague experiment than a true mock-up because why start making real mock-ups now? So it's time to sew together. I have very carefully laid all of my pieces out, still attached to their pattern pieces, so I know which vaguely pointy quarter circle is which. But yeah, we're just gonna sew it all together and then do a rough test fit. The, depending on how see-through the fabric is, I may bring you along on. Depends how much nippleage there ends up being. Nippleage perfectly reasonable word. Completely sensible, logical way of describing things. I haven't drunk my coffee yet. Okay, let's do some sewing. I seamed together the top two cut pieces and the bottom two cut pieces, and then pinned and sewed those to each other. The first cup went together fine, but... I was seaming together the second cup and fully just sewed the wrong corner of two pieces together. I needed to sew this side and I sewed this one instead and then was sat there for ages completely confused as to why the top and the bottom of the cup wouldn't match up when I was trying to pin them together. Got my answer. I think I'm gonna need to find a better labeling system for when I make the shell of the bra because there's all these little quarter circle shapes and they all look the bloody same. Finicky business, this. I'm gonna go and pick this seam and sew it back together. Well, not sew that one back together. Sew the correct seam together. And after sorting out my incorrect seam, I attached each cup to a band piece and seamed the band pieces together at the center. Okay, so we have a mock-up of sorts. Not the most useful mock-up because it is stretchy fabric, but the breasts have a point, that's useful. And from everything I can tell, it's gonna work. So I guess it's time to cut into the actual fabric. Right, make the true. The middle section here was a little bit too wide, so I went back in and adjusted the pattern a tiny bit. Took the tiniest amount off of it. Oh, on the recommendation of my mother, I've added notches to the cut piece, pattern pieces. The, they've added notches to the thing. So hopefully there will be fewer instances of sewing incorrect edges together. Fingers crossed. Cutting out time. I laid the pattern out on the outer shell fabric and as I hadn't included any seam allowance, chalked out a 3 8 of an inch or 0.9 centimeter seam allowance and cut all of my pieces out. Then, with the help of Hamish's handy notch-making tool, I added notches in all the relevant places. So I realised that because there is a slight stretch to this fabric, the outer shell fabric that I'm making the bra out of, and because it's not super lightweight cotton, but it's not particularly heavy duty either, I don't know if this has enough body to be supportive enough and to maintain its pointy pointy shape when it goes up against my chest. That makes it sound like some kind of 
deathmatch. Basically, I don't know if it'll be able to be robust enough for that. So it would probably be prudent of me to put some interfacing into the cups. I think I have fusible interfacing in my haberdashery boxes. Yes, I do. Reorganised and there's a little box that literally has a label on it that says interfacing. So I'm gonna go and see what I think would work and be robust enough for this purpose. I found some lightweight fusible interfacing that I thought would be up for the job, cut the relevant shape for each cut piece and then pressed them all to fix the interfacing in place. I did a single seam to attach the first two cut pieces and then decided to call it a night. We're back. It's a new day. My uterus is very angry with me today, but it's okay because I have tiny chocolate cupcakes. Let's get back to sewing. I picked up where I left off and continued working on the bra cups, but as I needed to leave one of the bra cup seams open, I had to contend with the fiddly business of attaching each cup piece to the previous one that had been attached, while avoiding sewing all the way to the end of the seam at the nipple point so the cup would keep the correct shape. It was an absolute pain, so I rewarded myself with tiny cakes at regular intervals to keep my morale high, and I must say, it was a very effective system. So I now need to go and iron my seams and press them flat so that I can do concentric circles of stitching across the entirety of the cup. So I just need to go do the pressing, which I've been procrastinating for 25 minutes or so now and just mindlessly scrolling through Instagram. So it is time to go set up the ironing board and iron. Maybe go get another mini cake. The uterus demands its sacrifice. So this afternoon my body got extra grumpy and because of that I didn't manage to get anything else done on the bullet bra beyond those two tiny seams for the cups and a small amount of ironing. Even though it's only half nine, I'm gonna go to bed. Well, I'm gonna take more painkillers and then I'm gonna go to bed. Did I need to say anything else? I don't need to make sense. I'm tired and in pain. I hope I can do stuff tomorrow instead. That's the long and short. So we're back. I am feeling much better. We're making concentric circles on the cups. I have more tiny cakes. They're so small. Look at how cute. So teeny. I think we're good to go. I selected a pink thread for the top stitching that I thought would blend well into the two pinks that were in the fabric and still look nice over the colours it would contrast. I decided to start my stitching off by tracing around a chunky reel of thread to get the first circle I needed to stitch right. I would then use that shape to guide the machine foot for the next larger circle, and so on and so forth. Doing the first circle was a tiny nightmare. It was very challenging to do accurately and was very stressful. I wasn't entirely happy with how either of them turned out, so redid that circle on both cups to make them better. And while they still weren't perfect, it was a significant improvement from the first attempt. Oof. I then top stitched over the entirety of each cup, using the previous line of stitching as a guide for the next one. I was reasonably imprecise about all this, but not so imprecise that it's really obvious. There are probably much more exact ways of doing this, but this is the system I came up with. The reason for this stitching, by the way, is structure. The original bullet bras of the 1940s were not underwired, so rows of stitching created stiffness and prevented the fabric from stretching to make sure the bra cups maintained their shape, were supportive, and provided adequate lift. It wasn't until after the Second World War had ended and metal became available for domestic use again that bullet bras were manufactured with underwires. I personally find underwires to be pretty uncomfortable, so I opted for doing lots and lots of stitching to give the bra structural integrity instead. Okay, so we have two... Oh my god. Okay, I just panicked because I thought I'd like messed this up and gotten something awful that I shouldn't have caught in some of the circular stitching. I got a random scrap of fabric in it. I think I'm gonna trim that out. So I have two cut pieces. I have arrows drawn on the insides of them so I know what way up they go and what side is what. And I think we're getting towards the last bits of construction. I need to change my thread back on my machine to go back to the construction colour and I think I need to start possibly figuring out how long I want the straps to be. I can't believe I caught a random scrap in this. There you go. 
barely know I completely ballsed it up. Excellent. I closed the final seam of each cup, pinned the relevant cup piece to each band piece, slowly and carefully sewed those seams, doing my best to avoid stretching out the fabric, and then attached the left and right side of the outer shell to each other. Okay, we have cozy jumper, so life is better than it was pre-cozy jumper. Hello once again, humans. This is where we're at, and it is starting to look like a bra. There are bits that still need doing. Straps need adding. Fastenings need adding. Lining needs adding. I need to press the seams that I just did, but it is 10 past 11 at night and I haven't had dinner yet. I feel like that's something that a reasonable person would do. Well, no. A reasonable person would have done that hours ago. Reasonably unlikely that I'm gonna do more on this tonight. This was something that I was like, it's a physically small thing. It won't take that long, but it's fiddly as hell. Uh, anyway. It's a new day again, because I cannot seem to finish this project in any sort of reasonable amount of time. We've got some pressing to do, and then the finishing bits, and then it will be done, hopefully. I really just want to get through it. So, yeah. To make the straps for my bullet bra, I pulled a thread in the fabric to identify the straight grain and cut a 3 inch or 7.5 centimeter strip. I cut that into two lengths of the correct size, folded the strip right sides together, sewed along one edge, turned it right side out, and pressed it. I then inserted shorter pieces of 1 inch or 2.5 centimeter wide elastic into that casing and secured the elastic in place with stitching across three points on the strap. I pinned one side of the straps between the shell and the lining, pinned the lining in place across the entire bra, and sewed the lining to the shell, leaving the back, the cutout at the center, and the second attachment points for the strap unstitched. And then I turned it right side out. Right, so I've only got some pressing, top stitching, the fastenings, and the back of the straps to attach, and it's done. But I need to take a break because my brain's melting out my ears, so I'm gonna go drink my tea and eat some more tiny cakes. I will finish this today, I think. I hope. Barring any appalling incident befalling me, I should be able to finish this today. We're back. I have done some pressing. I've done some finicky pinning over here and attached the strap to the back. Now I need to finicky pin this one, stitch those in place, and then I need to try it on to figure out how long I need the back pieces of elastic to be. So I did my pinning, and sewed the straps in place. I used multiple lines of stitching because anchoring elastic can be a pain. Inserted a wide piece of elastic at the center front and top stitched around the entirety of the top and bottom of the bra, an eighth of an inch or three millimeters from the edge. So the straps are attached and because the straps are attached and the little um, front of the bra elastic -y bit is attached, it meant that I could try it on to suss out how long the elastic bits at the back needed to be for the fastening. I was very nearly ready to scrap this entire project in video about an hour ago because I was really frustrated and didn't think it was going very well and was very much convinced that it wasn't going to fit me. It does. It does fit. It appears to fit. It's a bra. Like, it exists. It's real. And it... Hamish helped me measure the gap at the back of the bra to suss out how much elastic I need. And because it looks really flippin' cool, uh, he, he brought me a decaf coffee and a tiny cake to celebrate. I, I, I feel like a bra construction king. I really hoped that I could pull this off. And it's not done yet, so, you know, disaster may yet strike. It's possible. But, like, it can go on my body. Bras are hard to make, man. I am so impressed and shocked that this is... is okay. For context, it's 23 minutes past 11 and I can't words anymore. I'm very happy. I'm very proud of myself. I'm so close. I'm so close to finishing it. I just need to do the maths for the elastic, sew the elastic, and then do some top stitching. I can do that. That's fine. I'll probably finish a bit past midnight, have a midnight snack and then go to sleep. It's a bra. It's so cool, it's a bra. I'm gonna go eat my tiny cake now. I'm actively giddy about the bra, not the tiny cake. Although the tiny cake is great as well. I'm gonna go eat my tiny cake.
When looking at reference images of bullet bras, I'd noticed that a few of them were fastened with bikini clasps instead of hooks and eyes and wanted to give that a go. So I bought myself a big old clasp in black to match the chunky elastic, threaded a double layer of elastic through each side of the clasp and used stitches to secure it. I then inserted that elastic between the lining and outer shell of the bra and stitched over it multiple times to make sure it was well secured. To keep the lining in place, I stitched in the ditch of the seam where the cup and band connected and then had the excellent idea of adding additional stitching across the cups of the bra in between the seams to further secure the lining and add some extra structure. My bobbin thread just ran out and it's quarter past one, so I'm going to stop here. I only have three more of these cross cup seams to do and then it's done. So the next morning I reloaded my bobbin, re-threaded my machine, did my little cross cup marathon, and then my bullet bra was finally, finally done. astonished that I managed this to be honest. I feel a bit foolish because when I took on the making of this bra I was like oh it's only small it won't take that long and completely forgot to take into account that not only was I drafting a pattern which always takes ages I have never seen a bra pattern. I also didn't take into account that although it is small it is also very technical. Each cup has four pieces. Then there's a band piece on each side and a strap piece. And that's just for the outer shell. 12 pieces of fabric in the outer shell. 10 pieces of fabric for the lining. And there were five pieces of elastic. It was a small garment to make, but I was contending with 27 individual pieces that needed to be connected. And when you look at it like that, it's not surprising. It took me quite a while. Compare that to some of the other things I've made, like my walking skirt, a lot of big pieces and a lot of straight seams. The level of technical difficulty of making this, even though it is small, is way, way higher. Bras are difficult to make. But having said that, I did do it. Is it perfect? Definitely not. There are absolutely places where I made errors, but it does exist and it does fit me. I'm really impressed with myself. I don't think I fully thought through how difficult the thing I was taking on was when I decided to do it. And sometimes I'm quite glad that that is the way I am because it means that I throw myself into projects that if I thought through the difficulty of what I was trying to do, I probably would get scared and avoid doing them. I think I did admirably. Also, it's super comfortable. I'm really glad that they turned out properly pointy as well. I was really worried about that. I don't know if the placement of the points is ideal, but I can I can deal with that. I'm okay with that. It's funny because when people talk about historical clothes, they'll talk about the importance of your undergarments and how essential they are to creating the correct silhouette. But I think once you get to like the 20th century, after the Edwardian period, they're kind of like, mm, undergarments are undergarments though. You know, a bra is a bra. Well, underwear is underwear, innit? But it does make a very big difference to the appearance of the clothes that you wear. It's something I'm very proud of myself for making. I did, and I could, and it works. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me go on this slightly chaotic journey filled with tiny cakes. If you like this video, then give it a like, that helps me out a lot. If you'd like to see what else I get up to, then subscribe to my channel. But whether you decide to keep hanging out or not, I hope everything is okay in your world, and I'll see you guys next time. Can I do a zoom? Poor example. No. Yes? No. Maybe? Ah, uh, no, it was not recording. Sacrilege. Check. Is hair still hair? Still hair. What are they called? Come on, brain. Words can. Straps. I need coffee and sleep. Nim's your tired. Right.